Let's take our Bibles this morning and turn to the book of John. John, and we'll look at one verse, John chapter 15 and uh, verse number 16, and that'll be our, we'll learn our prayer secret. Last week, our prayer secret, who can remember, I know this is hard, it's not, I mean, it's hard for me because I, mean, I want to talk the lesson, but can you remember what the prayer secret was from last week. It starts with an I. Yes, invitation. It's that God has invited you. That's a prayer secret. We need to know that. I mean, it's not, we're not barging in on God. He has invited you to come and pray. Today's prayer secret number two is, uh, number. I'm, I'm taking these notes from uh, Guy King, who was a... Uh, minister back in the, I think, late 1800s, early 1900s, and uh, it's a good little booklet, it's a little booklet, if you want to buy a good book called Prayer Secrets by Guy King, but uh, number six, prayer secret number six is uh, the key, and the key to praying is to pray in Jesus' name, Now, I like what he says there at the top, the name is not just a kind of lucky charm which, if tacked on at the end of a prayer, will secure the desired benefit. It's not like, God, I really want a phantom, Rolls-Royce phantom. In Jesus' name, I said it in Jesus' name. It's not, <laughs> it's not some lucky charm that you tack on at the end of a prayer that will just guarantee uh, that. So we're going to look at that. Uh, what is the wonderful key? It will unlock the king's treasure and open to us the Father's resources. Uh, on the last night of Jesus, when, before he went to the garden and, and did the cross last night with his disciples, in John 14, 15, and 16, he, he went out and gave them uh, you know, a lot of instruction. And he didn't talk about frivolous things then. At this point, he was talking about the, I mean, the serious things, the most vital of importance. And he uses this phrase, in my name. Guess how many times he uses it in chapter 14, 15, and 16? In my name. Seven. That's right. <laughs> he uses it seven times. Let's, let's try to find them real fast, all right? Uh, you can mark them in your Bible. How about beginning in John chapter 14 and look at verse, let's just read verses uh, one, through four, 1 through 14. You see if you can find them. Ready? I'll read out loud. Jesus talking here. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. How sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father." And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, there's one of them, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, there it is again, I will do it. Shall we continue? Verse 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now to our text verse, chapter 15, verse 16. 
Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go forth and bring forth fruit. Go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Chapter 16, verse 23. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Verse 24. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Verse number 26, the final time. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, uh, and then we go on down. But those are the seven times it's mentioned. Is that what, how many there are? You got seven? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In my name, prayer secret, number six, asking things in the Father's uh, name. Um, look at number one on your blank there. The name is the introduction of prayer. Our name is unworthy. Our name is unworthy. Let it be at once acknowledged that in the courts of heaven, our name stands for unworthiness. You're not going to go into the courts of heaven and say, uh, on behalf of uh, Josh Avera, I would like to, you know, <laughs> um, uh, excuse me, uh, guys, wanna, on, on behalf of Danny McKittrick, I'd, I'd like, you know, that's unworthy name. Your name doesn't, it counts unworthiness. Uh, to present our petition in our name would be to invite refusal and disappointment. But what if we came in the name of somebody else? His name is supreme on your notes there. Our name unworthy. His name supreme. Who would like to read Philippians 2.9? Who's got that? Two nine, brother Bruce got it. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. All right, just think about that right there. His name is above every name. No wonder he said, "Often ask in my name, in my name, not in your name, in my name, because my name is supreme. There's a my name is above every name." I like that. Uh, too often we use this name hurriedly, formally, almost unthinkingly. But I tell you another thing about that, though, is we see the power of the name because many people today want to, you don't say that name. If you want to come uh, pray on the base or whatever, you don't say in Jesus' name. And I've been told that the chaplains, when they pray, are really, we ask in your name, we ask in in God's name, but they, won't, they will not say J-E-S-U-S. It's like taboo. But for me, that speaks to the truth that it is power in that name, <laughs> that there is a name that is above every name, uh, that the name of Jesus. And so, uh, but what if in reality it should be rather the most important part of the prayer that we're praying in Jesus' name? It's like that our petition is being presented through him. So when we pray in Jesus' name, we're praying as if it's on his behalf. Almost as if uh, we, he's asking for us. We're petitioning God on the name of Jesus. Number two, the name is the signature of prayer. Uh, we are permitted to use his name. That's a blessing. God allows us to use his name in praying. To use this name, John 14, 14, we read it. It says, um, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yes, brother. Why doesn't the chaplain just say, more up and just say it? Why is it a taboo? I don't know. Well, I, my personal opinion is because it's the true God. Right, but why don't they just say it up? Because man hates God. You know, not to get off subject, but you've got to stop and ask, did God ordain the chaplains and the chaplaincy? No. 
God ordained the church. God gave pastors, deacons, evangelists to the church to support missionaries for the edifying of the saints, for the evangelization of the lost. I get what the chapel's trying to do, but they're out of bounds. They're, that's not included in what God has. That's not God's way. Man cannot improve. Well, it feels good to say this. Man cannot improve upon what God's already said to do. We'll take it from here, God. <laughs> you know, we've missed it. Uh, his way is the right way. Um, I was talking to some guys yesterday about can, you know, can a chaplain stand up and just in the chapel service this afternoon say homosexuality is straight out of the pits of hell. It's as wicked as the devil. I asked the guys, can a chaplain say that? And they said no. Yeah. yeah. But in, just in a separate, I mean, if God calls a man to preach, I mean, you, you don't, it's, you don't, nobody takes this upon himself. God calls a man, and then that man stands up and says, thus saith the Lord. And if they, you know, if they don't allow that, then, I mean, you know, that, that would be like pastoring a church, but saying, now you can't say this, and you can't say this, yeah, isn't it? That's just like we, we really missed the idea here. Uh, how, can you, how, how can a man silence what God has said? Um, but anyway, back to our, well, why did we get off on that? Oh, chaplains, why can't they pray in Jesus' name? I don't know. I don't know. I guess they could literally stand up and pray in Jesus' name, but maybe they would not advance in career. Or, right, they might not get promoted. To everybody. Christmas party. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, a winter celebration. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah a holiday oh, party. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It it really breaks down that whole logic if you just follow it. It, it it's like you're not even making sense. But you know. But anyway. but let it be known that when you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, it's as if you are coming and petitioning through Him. It's, we're permitted to use his name. That sounds, now listen, that sounds like a blank check that's signed. Ask anything, John 14, 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Blank check signed by Jesus. Whoa. <laughs> so again, I can go to God and ask for $10 million and a Rolls Royce Phantom convertible. That's what I want. In the name of Jesus. And many churches today, not many, some churches today are doing this, like... Um, you know, that everything is about prosperity and, you know, you want that new jet, God will give you that jet. You want that new job, God's going to do it. I mean, whatever you say in Jesus' name, God, it's a blank check, it's going to happen. Uh, but uh, to present the check bearing his name, it's not like we are making the request, but it's like he's making the request. So that limits us. You would not go and ask for, I mean, because you're asking in the name of Jesus. Is Jesus concerned with a, me having a Rolls Royce Phantom and $10 million so I could go buy whatever? No, that's not. See, see when you pray in Jesus' name, it um, filters maybe some of our prayer requests. We begin to ask in Jesus' name. And then that gives us, okay, what am I asking for? Yes, it's a blank check, and it's acceptably guaranteed uh, by the name which is always honored at the Celestial Bank. Don't get me wrong, when, you, when we go and we pray in Jesus' name, 
you know, it's a blank check signed, and it is always accepted because there's no other name given among men. His name is the most supreme name. And so we uh, pray in his name, but we are careful on your blank there not to misuse his name. We must see to it that we ask nothing that he could not put his name to. So you wouldn't want to go ask, G- ask in the name of Jesus, uh, well, that's not, that's not in accordance with how Jesus would. That's not according to his name. We're not supposed to misuse his name. And then number three there, the name is the character of prayer. All our prayers are to be in accord with his name, with his nature, with his known character, if they are to be granted. So what we're saying here is you've got to know God in order to ask the right things, which would be in his name. An acquaintance with him. There must be an acquaintance with him, a knowledge of his mind. You've got to know what God would want. You've got to know the types of things that God says are valuable. You don't just come in there and just spout off all the things that you think. Again, in the name of Jesus, does not, it's not some little catchphrase that you tack on at the end of your prayer as some magic words. It's the idea that we're praying in the name of Jesus, that we, are, we've, we have an acquaintance with him. We recognize our name is worthless. We recognize the supremacy of his name, but we also understand that there's a knowledge that comes along with the things that I'm asking must be in accordance with who he is, what he's done, what he considers important. Uh, it comes from personal touch. It comes only from a personal touch a close study of his word, a close walk with him in daily trust and obedience. The more time you spend with God in his word, and the more time you spend in obeying him, the better you'll know what to pray and how to pray. Because then you begin to know him personally, and then you don't go pray silly things. You pray in his name. You're praying in his name. You don't go pray for uh, fleshly things that you think you need. Instead, you start praying for souls of men and women who are lost around you and they need the Savior. You start praying for the good health of some of your friends. or some, You start praying for the health of uh, Christians that are being persecuted. I mean, you know, you begin to pray in Jesus' name. The things that would matter to him because you've come to an understanding through his word. And as you study his word, you, you know him better. We shall come to possess his mind and know instinctively what he would think about matters. And thus be able to avoid asking anything that would be out of tune with his character. The more you get to know God, the more you know what to ask and what not to ask for. I'm not going to go to God and ask that he'll bless the homosexuals preaching. Yeah. Will you ask anything in my name? No, it's not, a, it's not a magic phrase. It's asking in his name. He condemns homosexuality. Right. Has always and always will. Therefore, I cannot, I would not pray that because I know him. Right. And when I pray in his name, it is to um, go along with his character and be in tune with what he wants. And so I wouldn't ask for that. Right. We wouldn't ask for all these fleshly desires. We wouldn't ask things that are against his will. We would pray in Jesus' name. It's a blank check signed by him that will be honored up there uh, in heaven, but it's always going to be in accordance to his name, at harmony with him, uh, a harmony with him. There can be no effective use of his name if our wills are not adjusted to his will, on your blanks there. Our will needs to be adjusted to his will. If our desires are at variance with his desires, Needs to be a union with him. I like these. Let's think about some of these as the illustrations that God talks about uh, a unity between him and us. John 15, 5 talks about we are the branches and he's the vine. Look at John 15, verse 5. Who'll read that one for us? Colin, you got it? John 15, 5. about that. 
but without me, you can do nothing. What if we apply that to prayer? Without God, you can't pray right. Because <laughs> he's, the, he's the vine. We're just the branches. But there's a unity there. There's a, a union that exists between the branch and the, and the vine. And so uh, we're the branches, he's the vine. Uh, we're the limbs in the body, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Let's look at that one. Who will read that one for us this morning? Boyd's got it. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members and parts of his. So we're the members of his body. Again, that's a unity. Branches and vine. Limbs and a body. Uh, we're members of his family, 1 John 3, 1. We are the bride of Christ, Ephesians 5, 25. There's a unity there. There's a harmony there. There's a union of will and will, desire and desire. And therefore, when we pray in Jesus' name, it's not that we're going to ask amiss. It's that we know instinctively the things that are important to him. Could it be that the reason we pray wrong is because we don't know God like we're supposed to know God? There's no unity. We don't spend time reading his word. We don't spend time obeying him. Okay, now it's time to pray. Okay, then our prayer life is, we don't know what to pray. And the reason we don't know what to pray is because we haven't spent any time of communion with God. And so to pray in the name of Jesus means that, man, we're on board with Jesus, that our will, best we know, is, is conformed to his will. Our desires are his desires. We've spent time with him in his word, and instinctively, I like that, we know what we're supposed to pray. We'll come to God asking for the right kind of blessings, asking for the right kind of things, all in the name of Jesus. I like this illustration. When a man uh, marries a girl, uh, you know, in most cases, maybe not anymore, but in most cases, even today, the, the woman takes the name of the man. Doesn't she? Yeah, Nikki Hemphill now. Yeah. Shella Johnson now. Yeah. Kirsten Middlebrook. Ariana, one day your name will change. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <Anyway. laughs> uh, but, but imagine, imagine this girl marries um, a man. She now takes his last name. Where before, let's say she was super poor. I mean poor. But she marries a guy who's very wealthy. Now her name... Uh, has changed to his name. So she walks into the bank now where before they wouldn't even look at her. But now she comes in in the name of her husband and it's like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> what do you want? The name has changed. She's coming in his name and it will be given. Uh, what a difference this will make now. She can make requests in his name that would never have been heeded in her own because she's coming in the name of her husband. That's how it is with us. When we come in the name of Jesus Christ, um, we know him in harmony with him, even united to him. We can use his name. When we say a prayer, it's as if he prayed it himself. Right, yeah. I'm Colonel So-and-so's wife. Oh, so if you weren't Colonel So-and-so's wife, it, you, it wouldn't matter. But because you're General So-and-so's wife, you're in. But how much more when we come in a name of, that's above every name? <laughs> I mean, there's a name that is given him that's above every name, the name of Jesus. And he says over and over, seven times in those last few minutes with his disciples, you ask anything in my name, ask in my name, ask in my name. Again, not a magic phrase. He's driving home the point that when you get with me, when you become one with me, and when your will matches my will, and when your desires are my desires, and when you understand your name's worthless, but you come in my name, and you begin to ask in my name, changes everything. He'll give you what you want. This is a secret. This is prayer number secret number six. To pray in his name means to pray in such a way that the petition is in complete harmony with the whole nature of Christ. Not easily, that's not easily done. It demands a life of obedience that we may truly be said to abide in him. It calls for growth of his word, that his words abide in us. You shall ask what you will, look, uh, and I will do it. All right, well, that's all I've got today. But that's prayer secret number six in that book. And, but it's a good one. Um,
Look at, we'll finish with this. Verse, uh, chapter 15, John chapter 15, verse number 7. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. That sums it all up. Asking in the name of Jesus means he's abiding in us and we're abiding, and his word is abiding in us and we are abiding in him. And then when we ask whatever we want, it'll be done. Because what we want is going to be what he wants. Does that make sense? And that is the meaning of praying in the name of Jesus. So the next time before we go before him and we, we want to ask in the name of Jesus, it's like a timeout. Is this really something Jesus would want? Or is this something Danny wants? And that checks my prayer life and makes sure I'm praying in accordance to the will of God. Now, how do I know what God wants and what God doesn't want? Well, I've got to spend time in his word. This is how we know him. We know him through his word. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. I mean, we get in the word of God and we begin to know the character of God and the makeup of God uh, as he's revealed it to us. And then we can go and, and we can pray in accordance with his will in his name. And then we can be sure uh, it's going to be taken care of. Amen. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this uh, instruction. And Lord, help us to be careful in our prayer life to know you. And then, Lord, as we pray to you and ask you things, we'll no doubt ask in your name and it will be appropriate and we'll line up with your will and our will will be as one. And um, Lord, we'll have the things that we ask for. And you've promised. It's a blank check signed by you, and you've promised, and we thank you for that. And so, even now, Father, we would ask that you will bless the services this morning. I pray that you would bring in uh, Ricky Anderson. I pray that you would bring him to church today in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you would uh, work in our hearts, Father, and help us to draw closer to you in our relationship. And, and Father, I pray uh, if somebody's here that's not saved today, we do pray that you would work in their hearts, prick their, their spirit, their conscience, and God help them to uh, come to the decision to trust you today. Thank you for each and every person that's here. I pray that you would just bless this day for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.